folks, welcome back to the shop. Frank here, working on the Cub Cadet forklift build. We left off last time with the test, the first test drive of the tractor in this configuration. So if you're just if you're new to the the channel, we're building a forklift out of an old Cub Cadet tractor. So we've stretched the frame, installed the seat, moved the dash to the rear, installed controls for the transmission and the engine start. Uh, ignition and choke and throttle and we took it out for a quick test drive and one of the things I want to check now is the steering effort seemed to be a little bit high I'm not sure whether it's due to low fluid pressure power steering or whether it's the geometry on the steering cylinder or the tires the tires have relatively low pressure in them so that's going to make them a little harder to turn I'm going to go ahead and jack up the front here, start the tractor up, and st operate the power steering and see if it's easier, if it's substantially easier, whether the, the resistance is in the steering mechanism, the steering valve, or whether it's you know, in the geometry or friction between the tires and the, and the ground. We'll go ahead and do that. All right, based on that, there's a good bit of resistance in the steering valve. So, um, I don't know whether it's a bad valve or there's some other issue. So, um, I mean, it's not unmanageable, but it's a little stiff. I don't know whether maybe it'll loosen up over time. I don't know. But the steering valve which is right here. Um, I have no fluid leaks, which is a little almost a miracle considering all the connections and the repairs we had to do to the steering valve. So, don't know. I have to think about it. Maybe I'll get another valve and swap it out. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, it's a little more resistance than than you would normally want. It takes, I mean, you can't just spin the steering wheel with one hand. You had to use two hands. So, um, all right, we'll, we'll work on that, see what else we need to do. Let's get working on the battery box. That's the next step is get the battery permanently installed. Right now I'm using this jump pack right here, but we're going to put a battery shelf or rack here underneath the seat, um, so we'll get started on that. I thought it would take just a minute to show you some of the uh, cool stuff I got at a recent estate sale. And I mentioned this in an earlier video that I would uh, give you a, a peek at a couple of things that... Uh, Several people have commented that I needed for the shop and things that I agree I um, needed. I just had not uh, found 
the time or the the urgency to go about you know purchasing them but i did find some stuff some neat stuff at a recent estate sale uh, this was an elderly older gentleman who passed away and his estate was cleaning out quite a large barn workshop full of um, wood and metalworking equipment uh, the he had several metal lathes and a Bridgeport mill but you know the stuff I have here is in better shape than than what was there would need it would have anything there would have needed a lot of work uh, but I did get some tools and I'll show you this first one this is I mean this isn't anything spectacular it's I guess central machinery is Harbor Freight 20 ton press um, but it is a, a small press and and it's just the size I really need for this shop I don't need a big one um, but there are a couple times when I could have used one so this I mean this is in almost new condition um, it works fine so I did it didn't come with a handle um, but I can make a handle for that in any case it uh, looks like a decent little little press so I'm pleased with that and um, I got a good good deal on it so that's uh, several people have commented that I needed a hydraulic press or they were surprised I didn't have a hydraulic press so there's another tool that again people were surprised I didn't have um, but you know I've not been fabricating or working with metal you know for the, for very long i mean five years or less and i've been I've been a lifelong woodworker and which accounts for all the woodworking tools here in the shop and you know i have you know been a f been fairly um immersed in woodworking for as a as a serious hobby for I mean decades 50 years probably since i was a kid i started working in my dad's workshop he had a little basement workshop that i was fascinated with he had an old sears table saw my foray into metalworking is relatively recent um, one of the reasons is um, well besides the interest in cub cadets and working with them which is kind of what drew me into it i guess but I don't have any room for any more furniture so anyway here's the second item I got it's a break I, and I, I mean I don't know exactly what kind it is it has rollers at the top for I assume bending, rolling um, material, and there's a number of gears which go into the gear train, I guess, to change the distance between the rollers. And then, let's see if I can I have it on a couple of moving dollies because it weighs several hundred pounds. Um, so it has um, this blade here, which is segmented. So I'm assuming you can take seg pieces out if you want it, if you're bending metal for a box. And then it has this um, V channel here, which looks like it's adjustable as well. So I'm assuming that's its function is for, you know, bending corners. I can't read. This label is totally obscured, so I can't read it. Um, I may try to wash it and try to clean it to see if I can read it. But so this is a uh, very heavy duty. You can see the rollers rolling. Um, I'm going to operate the, the handle over here. So 
it's very heavy as I said and I have to use the shop crane to to pick it up and my plan is to put it on a table I've ordered another table uh, another cast iron heavy duty table to to put it on so once I get that you know get the table get it set up get it lifted up on the table uh, I'm hoping to put casters on the table so I can move it around but of course casters might make it hard to use because it would move around when you go to pull the lever perhaps so we'll see about that okay so a bending brake I don't know what gauge metal it will deal with but I guess we'll find out all right third thing kind of the thing I'm most excited about is a TIG welder it was purchased in 1997 it's a square wave TIG 175 Lincoln and it works great I've um, I actually got a got the argon the argon tank that came with it was empty so I got that filled or exchanged and um, hooked everything up it's got a great foot pedal it's got a big big foot pedal came on that cart came with some um, filler metal rods and I've, I've never used a TIG welder before and I I'll show you my first attempts at TIG welding some of this is um, I mean it's pretty bad uh, but uh, not too not terrible I mean I was running 100 amps or something here 80 or 100 amps and then bumped it up to 125 amps and then I decided to try a welding a coupon and this is my very first um, attempt at welding TIG welding a coupon just a quarter inch well this is five sixteenths and this is quarter looks like or quarter and yeah something like that anyway so I'm not too embarrassed about that weld uh, it's not perfect but it's uh, not bad so anyway uh, that's my first attempt at, at, at playing around with a TIG welder uh, it came with a number nine torch I went and bought a set number 17 torch and you know gradually got some more getting some more supplies another set of um, um, lenses and cups and uh, some welding rod it came with some it came with a some welding rod this is a pile of welding rod there's aluminum there's what I think is stainless aluminum aluminum and then steel and I mean it's copper copper plated steel so here's some more of the copper of the steel rods so I have not tried anything in stainless or aluminum yet but that's my objective is eventually teach learn teach myself or learn how to TIG weld it is uh, not I mean it's not the kind of welding that you would do on a project like this for fabrication except for maybe some specific components that warranted it um, it's a slower but much more civilized process so I'm excited about that opportunity to learn something new gain a new skill so that's the three big things that I um, managed to get um, I did get 
another. Um, I got a PTO generator, uh, 12 kW PTO generator on a little trailer that's in great shape. So it's a backup generator. Um, couldn't pass that one up. And I got a new toolbox. This is a HOMAC toolbox. So, and it was, it had a lot of, a lot of stuff in it, though I've gone through it and clean, cleaned out a lot of, a lot of stuff that was um, excess. So it's uh, got some some clamps, a spot welder. Um, not sure what that is. This is the TIG torch accessories some cylinder hones, a whole bunch of metal clamps, some gear pullers, a few things. This will fit my 9-inch Logan lathe, nice four-jaw chuck, some collets. I'm not sure. I mean, these are R8 collets for the mill. I have a complete set. I'm not sure how useful these will be, but a little Morse tape or chuck, surface plate height gauge of some sort, so I don't have a surface plate, but that's something extra, fly cutter, R8 taper, fly cutter, a couple of arbors uh, for either shell mills or slitting saws, a couple of, a couple of slitting saws, I don't know, a handful of uh, bits, a lot of countersinks and a few end mills. It looks like a few of these are in good shape. I mean they have the coating on them from being sharpened. Some some parts for the lathe, and then miscellaneous stuff. Got a few, uh, a few gauges, test indicators, a couple dial dial indicators, pieces, parts, a pile of um, calipers. I'm not sure what I do with all those bunch of files. I think these a lot of these files must have come from a, a um, file filing machine, what do they call it? A key setter machine. Yeah, I moved some of my own um, reamers into here. I got a couple of reamers with the toolbox, but not really much in the way of, of tooling for the for the mill, but you know, some, a little bit, but another toolbox, which is a great, a great thing. Uh, the one thing that came in the toolbox that is pretty cool is this rotary table. I have a smaller rotary table. I have this eight inch rotary table that I've had for a couple of years. I bought it after I got the mill, but this is a 10 or 12 inch. The only problem with this is it weighs so much. It's um, it must weigh well over 100 pounds, but it's in good shape. I cleaned it up, and uh, so something else to to go with the mill. All right, so that's about it. Uh, not much else. A few other hand tools and stuff, but nothing of any major major significance. So that was my estate sale bonanza um so i thought i said i would share that with you and so you can see what i got all right let's go back to the tractor
All right, so I'm working on the battery tray. This fits right down inside here. So I decided to use this roto cutter kit again. This is a roto roto cut sheet metal hole cutting kit, and uh, it works a lot better in the drill press than it did with a hand drill. Even though it says cutters and arbors for three eighths or larger handheld drills, 
and drill presses. So I think definitely drill press material.
I mentioned a bit ago that I ordered a new table for the uh, bending brake and it came today. It's actually a, uh, another arc flat uh, fixture table from Langmire Systems. It's here in the, on the hand truck. And I'll need to use the crane to pick that up and assemble it as well. And I had oh, got a little visitor here. My Brutus. How you doing, huh? You being a good boy? It's very nice outside. It's uh, mid-November and it's like 80 degrees out. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get this unpack, unwrap. There's my boys. There's my Butchie and my Brutus. Brutus, he's pushy. Being a good boy, yeah. Finishing up uh, some changes to the steering mechanism. Uh, I had a, and you saw me uh, put it together and grease it, this flex coupling. And I just cut the steering shaft out off of it because I decided not to use it. My alignment of the steering valve here and the steering valve housing to the hole in the dash was pretty good. So I've decided to change from a, the flex coupling to this is a sleeve 
fits over the three quarter inch shaft and is pinned to it. And I've just got a quarter inch bolt going through it right now. And it comes through the dash and I've got this self aligning bearing here and I'm, going, I'm getting ready to transfer punch four holes and bolt this to the dash and this gives me a much more stable installation of the steering wheel. I had a little bit of play in the steering column because of the way the flexible coupling operated. This is going to give me a much stabler arrangement. It's also going to take out the friction of the flex coupling, which I think was contributing to some of the high steering effort that I seem to be getting. I think this is going to be a much more robust uh, way to mount the steering column. I mean, it's not... <laughs> maybe uh, the most attractive. And I thought about putting this on the underside, but uh, that, I mean, I just don't have a whole lot of space there. This also gives me a greater distance between here and the bearings in the steering valve. So by greater separation, I've got a little more stability, I think. So I think this is gonna work fine We'll paint it black when we get done here. We're going to repaint all this anyway. So I'm getting ready to run the transfer punch here, punch some holes, drill uh, the holes through the, the dash, and put some, some bolts through there. Uh, I think these might be half inch. Let me get a... Let me see if I can get a half inch bolt here. That's a half inch. Looking for a shorter one. Do I have who do I have here? Is this Brew Brew? Yeah. And Butchie. What are you guys doing? You coming in? Coming in to tell me something? Yeah, you're being good boys. You want a treat? Anybody want a treat? Instant, oh, instant attention. When there's treats at stake here. So if I had some boys sitting Watch your fingers with Brutus because he's he's pretty uh, anxious to get those pretty anxious to get those treats. All right, I got two short. I'll have to get some shorter half inch bolts, but I think these holes are no, they're not half inch. I wonder I know 3 8 inch would fit but I think 3 8 inch would be pretty big I mean pretty loose but loose is not necessarily always a bad thing sometimes a little bit loose is a good thing I'm going to say they're 7 16 holes. Yeah, I mean, 3 8 is pretty loose. Well, that won't be a problem. I'll go ahead and drill. I'll mark it, and I'll probably drill like 7 16 
I bet it's... I think I'm going to pet my Butchie. Come here, Butchie. What you doing, huh? Give me your, give me your paw. You got a hurt paw. Butchie's got a hurt paw. Come here. Sit. Sit. Give me the paw. He's got a hurt paw. He... Uh, the far left toe nail broke or got degloved or something happened to it. It's been sore. He doesn't seem to doesn't seem to be bothering him much in the way he moves. Alright, I'm gonna transfer punch and drill some holes here. So I'm drilling through several layers here. The first layer is this sheet metal, and then there's a layer of fiberglass, and then there's metal underneath. I'll try to pick up the fiberglass fibers. All right, I'm not going to tighten that down until we're done. So I hate to 
have to mess up the well I have to say that's improved the steering effort and the stability of the steering wheel tremendously all right I'm I'm really happy about that improvement on the steering wheel that changes I mean that's kind of a game changer in terms of steering effort just avoiding eliminating that flexible coupling which had some friction in it I think was a lot of it and this is just much much more stable and actually much less steering effort we'll start it up and see what it takes to, to steer but I think that's made all the difference all right I think we're gonna wrap it up this week that's all I've got time for it's been this video has been several I mean it's been 10 almost two weeks in the making um, I've had a lot of fall chores to deal with gardens to put away and that sort of thing as well as a seafood festival to attend so I spent several days you know involved in that but anyway so good progress here battery mounted steering fixed and um, I think we're ready to shift our focus now to the fork the fork lift the forklift part of this build so we'll come back next time working on the mast probably do some mock-ups figure out uh, how how we're going to build it and um, start working in that direction we've got a frame reinforcement to work on so I know that I'm going to build a panel probably 3 8 inch steel that's going to run alongside the frame here come up somewhere here for a connection to the one end of the tilt cylinder one on each side and then also extend past the frame here and have a connection for the bottom of the mast a pivot point for there so we'll probably spend some time working out working out that as well okay thanks for watching leave a comment subscribe if you haven't already uh, you know I don't know what's going on with subscribers I, there seem to be you know an increase in subscribers and then it drops off dramatically and then gradually increases and then I don't know whether and I asked YouTube what was going on with the seem like mass unsubscription unsubscribing large numbers hundreds of unsubscribers people unsubscribing all at once and uh, they couldn't explain it to me so I, I don't know it, I suspect maybe it's spam things subscribing that they un that you, Google or YouTube unsubscribes but anyway check and make sure if you subscribed that you're still subscribed um, leave a comment hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys next time